Ladies and gentle hands, welcome back to another episode of not hardcore Minecraft, but a Q&A video. So I asked you guys in the last hardcore episode video to send me some questions you guys might have for me because, you know, uh, you know, celebrating like 4K subs. I, I'm, I'm moving right now, so I'm kind of busy, but I thought I'd answer a bunch of you guys' questions. So in the background, I got some like, you know, me gathering some resources for the upcoming build and the next hardcore episode. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So if you're interested in hearing all my answers to your questions, sit back relax and enjoy my answering. <laughs> All right, so my first question I got is from MJ ZQ 9 ZG. I assume that's just an auto generated YouTube name. Anyways, who are your biggest builder inspirations and what about Minecraft YouTube in general? So my biggest like building inspiration is mostly like, I see a lot of stuff on Pinterest and Twitter and that's kind of how I get ideas for like palettes and maybe shapes sometimes for buildings. But you Minecraft YouTube in general, like just people I kind of look up to and uh, kind of take some inspiration from. It's mostly like B-dubs. I really like his editing style and his pacing. I think his pacing is really well done. I like Etho, uh, his like cadence, and he's very um, clear with his words. I'm not very good at that. I'm still trying to get better at it. And another really big, just core inspiration just for y doing YouTube in general is like Captain Sparkles. I grew up on that man. So this question's from Anders Longlund. 2597. I'm going to butcher names. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. How much of your building do you plan out and how much Lightmatica do you utilize? And I love your videos. Thank you very much, Anders. I do plan out a lot of my builds. I mostly have been sketching recently. When I first started this hardcore world, I did a lot of Lightmatica. Like my starter house was Lightmatica because I wanted my starter house to be good. And then like the second building I made, which is like right next door to it, the, the, the deep slate roof one also use Lightmatica for that one. But I kind of started weaning away from it because it, I found myself limiting how it looked in the world. And I feel like when you build in survival for survival, like you kind of you can make the terrain work a little bit more with your build. And obviously you can terraform afterwards as well using Lightmatica. But I tend to not plan out my builds way too much. I, I like to just kind of wing it. I, drawing, I think, is my best way of like planning my builds nowadays. I, obviously, the bridge we built last episode, that was a big Lightmatica thing because I had to use World Edit and I had to make sure it fit into the, the valley there. So I had to use a lot of creative mode for that. Next question is from Katie Troke. What kind of Minecraft gameplay do you enjoy the most? I know you've done a few adventure maps with C-Scoop and the Highcraft gang, so do you prefer those or do you like this type of content more? Also, love the videos so far. Your salad building and personality are super fun. Uh, thank you so much, Katie. I really do appreciate it. And between Highcraft, if you aren't familiar, one of my good friends, uh, C-Scoop, uh, we do the series on his channel. It's called Highcraft. And essentially, it we just get belligerent and play really OG Minecraft maps or just like OG, like Skyblock, super hostile maps. Anyways, so I really do enjoy making those videos because obviously I'm just hanging out my, with my friends. We're sitting there grinding Minecraft for six hours, seven hours. We've had a few sessions go for eight hours. <laughs> so I really do enjoy those videos. They're personally, I would not want to sit and edit those videos. I know Cooper already spends so much time working on each of those videos. It's a lot of editing. And I definitely prefer the survival content, like the let's play content, because that's the content that I consume the most. Like, I love watching Let's Plays. From Cypra, how did you learn to build custom trees so well? Are there any tips you give the people wanting to learn? So custom trees, I would say the best way, the best tip I could give you is to look at real trees and to really like analyze how the branches form. Cause that's probably the hardest part is branches and like leaf density. Leaf density is another hard part, but like you can kind of just like, don't be afraid to just like place a block and if it doesn't work, break it, you know? Don't be afraid to look at tutorials online or like other reference images because that also really helps with just understanding how block combinations could go because there's so many different shapes in Minecraft, but they're all still like very limiting. Next question is from Daniel Nazari. What are you hoping to see in the next five years if the series doesn't end yet? Not a job interview. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a... Uh... I'm actually not very good at job interviews, but in the next five years, I mean, if I were to keep the hardcore world, I would hope I would keep the you know same world and it would just be like super, like it'd be super immersive. I, I really want to make multiple different cities in my world that you can travel between and they're like different themes, different vibes, like different location, like everything like that. I, I really, really want to have a world like that. And obviously all interconnected by the rail network that I'm slowly working on. If it's just in general with my channel, I hope to, you know, be really active. I hope to also not be doing 
weekly uploads and do more uploads that are like, I've put in two weeks of time into this or a week and a half of time into this edit. And I'm like freaking cutting off two frames just to make the sentence flow better or like the pause in between. Like it's, I'm very particular with my pacing. So I would love to be able to dedicate more time to each video to make them that much better every time. And I think I'm doing a good job of it right now, but it's gonna get to a point where I'm gonna want even more out of it. So we'll see what happens in five years. It'd be really cool to continue doing YouTube. Yeah, I hope to also like be able to make bigger and like longer videos that uh, are kind of a bit more bingeable maybe. The next question is from Rend or Ren Renade. Ooh, sorry, I butchered that name. The bridge is absolutely amazing. So stunning. I can clearly see the Elden Ring inspiration. Thank you, by the way. How much time do you usually spend preparing builds and creative compared to uh, time spent building in survival? And what are your thoughts on mods such as Light Matica to help builds? And what is your current build in Elden Ring? Creative part, I kind of answered that in an earlier question. When it comes to creative, I do do a lot of planning, especially when it comes to palettes and colors and uh, overall like shape of the build. Like I do do a lot of uh, wool outlines that kind of just help me be like, this is the general shape of the build. But when it comes to like, for example, like the Cyberpunk city where I built that uh, green building, that green corner of like an apartment building, I straight up saw an apartment building in my city that I lived in. And I saw it was cool. It was green. It looked a little modern. And I said, I can make that in Minecraft. So I took a picture of it and then I sketched it out on a little notepad and I said, I'm going to make it. So that one was straight to from inspiration to survival and which I, I, you know, I said that earlier, I try to go straight to survival because you can kind of integrate it more into your world. Rather, if you build it in a flat world and creative, it doesn't really integrate with your world as like smoothly for the builds. I do spend time in creative. It's usually like 20, 30% maybe of my time is spent in creative and the rest of it's all in survival. Cause I got to gather the resources. I got to actually place all the blocks. And then to answer your last question, what's your current build in Elden Ring? At this very moment, I'm using a, I'm a katana build. I'm a samurai katana build, dual wielding. I think I have a Nagakiba and a moon veil. The moon veil is very fun, but I just got the rivers of blood sword. So I think I'm gonna start specking into arcane instead of intelligence soon. But right now I'm just having fun with the moon veil because I think the moon veil is really fun. Next question from Ray and Hani or Ryan ha Donny. I don't, I'm sorry. Do you use concept arts or inspiration pictures for your builds? Yeah, I kind of touched on this too. I use a lot of inspiration. Like I think that's the easiest way to do anything. Uh, the concept arts are like probably the most fun because you're literally taking another art form, you know, usually like digital paintings or realistic paintings or even like architecture in real life. And you're converting it into Minecraft, which is a totally different medium. It's like painting on two different types of canvases. So it's really fun to like interpret someone else's art piece and kind of morph it into your own and putting your own twist on it, but also still staying somewhat true to the original piece. And I just think that's like, like the most fun part of building for me is it kind of feels artistic. Have you ever thought about joining a server? I love to see you in something like the SDMP. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about the SDMP. They're not really my people. I, I'm a little bit more chill. I like to still be goofy and have fun, but it's a little bit harder for me to do that. Just like with someone random, I don't really know. I mean, I did recently join a server. So if you are interested in any of that, like SMP content, I did upload my last video, which was, I made a flying base. That's what it was. All right, next question is from Dark Magma. What is your favorite thing about Minecraft and what's your favorite block in Minecraft? Much love to the channel and I love how the world is coming along. Thank you very much. I'm very happy with this world too, by the way. I think this world is awesome and I have so many ideas for it over time. I think it's gonna be so sick. My favorite block though, it's tough to say. Wait, I actually think I just answered my own question. I think it's tough blocks, dude. The tough blocks that just got added are elite. They are like, the textures on them are so good. The tone of the block being like a cool gray kind of tone of a block is like perfect. It, it works so well with so many different blocks in the game. And it's also just like a darker block. And I think darker blocks are just, just overall they're better because they, they blend easier with you know, more extravagant colors on like the color wheel. What is the animation pack you have? So I use fresh animations for all of like the animals and stuff that are in my world and all the like entities. This one's from Kangaroo. I like that name. What is your opinion on Minecraft Bedrock? So, I mean, not to hate all my Bedrock viewers, I think Bedrock is pretty trash. <laughs> I think the idea of Bedrock is really cool. You know, cross-platform, it works on everything. You can, you know, you got a homie who plays on Xbox, you got a homie who plays on his phone, you got a homie who plays on his PC. You guys can all play in the same world. I think that's, I think that's what Java Edition should have. And it's also, you know, it's Java. 
So I, I Java is cross-platform, but I understand it because it is like not really efficient on every machine. Like it's not going to be as efficient on your phone as it is on the PC or the Xbox as it will be on, you know, the PC. So it makes sense that like Java is a separate like entity from uh, Bedrock Edition, but Bedrock Edition has so many like issues and like the feel of it. I think the feel of Bedrock, I've tried playing Bedrock so many times. It just feels wrong. It doesn't feel like Minecraft. It feels like I'm playing a knockoff mobile game off the app store called like block mine or just block game. You know, like it doesn't feel like I'm playing Minecraft. It feels like I'm playing some knockoff. Oh, maybe I'm being a little elitist there. <laughs> Next question is from Restates. Hey man, new viewer here. Love the vid. I love to make a request of sorts. It'd be cool to see a time lapse of the builds and possible commentary over it, similar how they do it in Hermitcraft. So I was actually thinking about doing this for uh, members only. I was gonna do some members only content because I think I wanna, you know, I wanna reward the people who are supporting my channel directly a little bit more than how I do right now, which I mean, there's a whole server for you guys to play on. And, you know, I interact with you guys and on uh, Discord and everything, but I wanna give a little bit more for it. So I think member only uh, videos and live streams. I already do the live streams fairly, you know, fairly commonly, but I want to do videos where I'm actually doing exactly what you're asking for is like live commentary when I'm placing the blocks talking about what the hell I'm doing just because I think that would be you know some people will find that really interesting and I think I also want to give a little bit more incentive to become a member because it directly supports me and like uh, helps me continue my journey on YouTube. Next question is from Sterling. What mods do you use? I'm pretty sure I use all your mods but just curious if you don't use any I don't know about. So right now I actually have a mod pack on Modrinth. It's called Barsa's Vanilla Experience. Used to link it in all my old videos, but I stopped linking it because I'm weird and I just forgot. But if you ever want to find it, it's just called Barsa's Vanilla Experience. Right now it's not updated to 121, but it will be updated soon. I'm just waiting for a few mods to get updated so I can like, I don't have to worry about like updating it a second time or a third time. But yeah, I use a lot of like very client side uh, aesthetic looking mods that kind of just add to like the atmosphere of the game and I think that I mean I think a lot of people enjoy that experience I think the game looks way nicer and it's like a little bit more it feels a little bit more like you have shaders on but you don't because it's still like the vanilla rendering I think it looks awesome so if you're interested in that mod pack it's going to be in the description and I mean, if you join my discord I'll announce when I update it to 121 if you want to keep up to date on that Next question is from Spooky Rock. How would you come up with your building designs and palette colors? I've been trying to become a better builder myself. So I think the best way to do it is there's actually this uh, other YouTuber. His name is uh, Nice. He's Nice. It's with a G. He has this thing called a color world that he releases every Minecraft update. And it's literally just a giant world where it shows all of the Minecraft blocks in like a 3D space. And you can quite literally make lines going from... Okay, I'm gonna make a gradient going from pink to blue, which is insane, but you could do it. You could you could draw out the line that you need for all the blocks that you're gonna need if you wanna make that type of gradient. So that helps a lot with choosing like palette colors, but also just like referencing other builders who have experimented with said block palette that you wanna go into. Like if I'm looking for a brown palette, I might look around and see like who else has done brown palettes. Oh, they use mud blocks. Oh, they use the, the brown mushroom blocks. Oh, they actually used uh, like strip spruce wood as like a little bit of like an accent to add a little color in there, you know? So there's like a lot of choices. And I think just like looking for inspiration is like the biggest, like pivotal, like that's the biggest move you could do for yourself. If you want to ever improve in building is just looking at other people's builds. Don't copy, but look at other people's builds and like understand why they're using the blocks they're using. Shanty asks, have you had a YouTube channel before this one? I have, I, like I said, I kind of hinted at it a little bit earlier. I've been watching, you know, like Captain Sparkles, OG YouTuber for like 10, 12 years. However long he's been on the platform, I've been watching him since day one. So like, I'm a big fan of him and he's a big inspiration on why I'm even trying to do YouTube. And uh, when I was younger, of course I had a YouTube channel. I don't think I want to dox it because I am a youngin in there and I probably dox myself a handful of times in those videos. But they're, I mean, they're still all out there. So I'm not like too pressed if people find it. But yeah, I used to do YouTube when I was super young. When I was 13, I found like my mom let me make a YouTube channel and I would just upload anything and everything. Stop motion. I did origami videos. I made freaking Pokemon videos. I made a uh, Minecraft pocket edition let's plays. Like I was all over the place, but it was, it was awesome. It was like, you know, how I got into it. And then this was the popular question right here from these two and a lot of other people asked too. 
is how do I make the clouds look like that on God? <laughs> and the answer is better clouds. Better clouds is a goaded mod and you can customize so much with it. My config is all sorts of all over the place and it's probably going to be included in my mod pack when I update it. So if you really, really want to just have your clouds look like mine, you can download my mod pack and steal my config for it. <laughs> Next question from lasagna skateboard 69 fire name, by the way. Why did you stop saying gentle hands? Uh, the answer is a YouTube retention. <laughs> I would take too long in my intros and I've been trying to experiment with some different intro styles and I couldn't really find a way to like integrate the ladies and gentle hands. And I did think that was a kind of like a funny little catchphrase. In general, I kind of cut it out. Not intentionally. I still like to bring it up, especially like in a video like this. I think in the intro, I literally said ladies and gentle hands. So like, but if I'm like, this video's got, got a bang. Like I, I put a lot of effort into this video. Like I'm going to, like I do a custom intro for it. I, uh, you know, I'm not going to do the ladies and gentle hands because it doesn't really flow in that whole like intro, intro piece, you know? Our first discord question is from a icon Unicode that I, it looks like a little bumps. <laughs> what made you want to start YouTube? I've always wanted to do YouTube growing up. I kind of mentioned that earlier. I've always wanted to do YouTube growing up and I've had a lot of inspirations throughout my time. One of the main motives was just like I was doing school, so I didn't want to start YouTube because it's like, a, you know, it's a lot of dedication and it takes a lot of time from, oh, it takes a lot of time away from like socializing and my academics. And, you know, I went to school, uh, I, I paid for school and everything. So I wanted to make sure I was making my money's worth out of it. So I didn't touch YouTube, but I've always wanted to do YouTube. Like, but schooling was always like my number one, number one, stay in school, like focus up, like get good grades. So as soon, literally the moment I was done with school, I made my YouTube channel. Like I was done with school in December of 2023 and I made my channel in January of 2024. And my first upload was in February of 2024. Like I was very quick to be like, I may as well try this YouTube thing while I have some downtime between a job and being done with school. So that didn't, maybe I answered your question there, but I, you know, I've always wanted to do YouTube is the answer. And I finally had the excuse to do it being done with school and not having school hanging over my head anymore. Kurthy from the Discord asks, what would you tell a person that struggles to keep their motivation for making YouTube videos? I struggle with this a lot. I do have my main YouTube channel that I've kind of just like, if you guys, you know, you can see it if you go through my channel, it links to what the bars and I upload very inconsistently on there. You can see that like each upload is a, essentially a year apart. And it's because I, you know, I, I'm really bad at dedicating time to videos, but I also spend a lot of time editing. Like I'm a big, like I'm a big time editor. I went to school to go to for editing. So hope that clears up my whole editing freaking obsession. <laughs> but in terms of motivation, I think the best way is just consistency. If you really want to have a go at it is just staying consistent and you're going to burn out. You're going to, you're going to doubt yourself, but you just need to not you just need to not doubt yourself like it you are your only motivator is something that i heard a few years ago and that's kind of stuck with me is that no one else is going to motivate you to do what you want to do so you have to do it does that make i hope that makes sense i hope that I hope, that sounds inspirational pizza skeleton from the discord asks what are you most proud of in your work and i think i kind of touched on this earlier it's just that i i get a lot of satisfaction out of making art like i'm very i'm very artistic and very i feel like i'm a very artistic and very creative person and i like to be able to like express i just like expressing myself in in art and i mean i know minecraft it's mostly builds and like buildings in themselves but i think just be able to like show show off my my art pieces essentially like hey here's a cool build i made like here it is like for the world i want you guys to see it people are like it looks awesome some people even comment and they're like this is sick this actually inspired me to make this build and they'll they'll post it in my discord and i'm like that's so cool like someone was inspired by me and i was inspired by someone else so like it's a whole chain and that like that motivates me because i think that's so cool because it's like how i function too you know i look at someone else's inspiration like someone else's art piece you know someone else's minecraft build or their or their like architecture or whatever and i'm just like that's so cool i want to make that and then i make it and then someone else sees what i made and they're like that's cool I picked up some things from that. I want to make something else. They make something else and they share it with me. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, that's so cool that you found motivation from that. Flesh and Rags, a Bars member. If you're not a member, make sure to become a member. Which video has been your favorite to edit? Ooh, this is actually a tough one and I'm gonna need to pull up all my videos right now. <laughs> 
You know, I'm not gonna lie, I think my favorite video that I have edited on my channel is actually my first video. I had a lot of fun experimenting with like the whole format that I'm that I've pretty much like gone off of. I spent a lot of time on that first episode because I wanted it to establish my my style for my videos and also like it was a good, you know, leaping off point. And it, it, that video like kind of means a lot to me. But I think that was my favorite the, the edit because I just had so much fun being like straight up just creative and like there's one moment in that video where I mined a bunch of sand from this like mountain. When I was editing, I'm like, it would be really funny if I took like four or five screenshots of the mountain slowly, slowly being de demolished and I synced it up with the Minecraft eating sound. I remember this so d distinctly. And then I made the edit and I'm like, that is so funny. Like that is so funny to me. I think it's perfect. And then like, also like the traveling montage I did when I went to go get uh, like bamboo. And I just have like this like classic like journey journeyman music like going over the prairie like organ trail or something crazy like it just was so like that music and unfortunately the video is copyrighted because of that song but i think like that video was so fun to edit and it kind of just like has a little has a little place in my heart our next question from another channel member become a channel member is from piper would you be able to go into detail of your build proc process for like matica scale buildings curious how you plan out shapes and palettes yeah, I kind of went over this with another question. Uh, I try not to use Lightmatica, but when it comes to Lightmatica stuff, uh, I, it's me in a creative world and I'm going crazy. Uh, obviously, I, I mentioned it another t uh, on another question. I'm going to be making specific videos going into the details of how I make my builds. And it's going to be for members only. So if you're interested in those videos, become a member, support the channel. I always appreciate it. Pizza Skeleton, another question from Pizza, asks, do you prefer making videos or streaming? So... Pizza knows this because they're one of my OG viewers from uh, my What the Bars era, I guess, or maybe even my Vexio era, era, which I think the next question is also going to be asking. I used to stream a lot, like back in 2020 when COVID was peak, peak COVID, I was streaming like a mother trucker. I was streaming almost every single day, and it was just because I enjoyed streaming. Streaming was like a, this whole new era of like content creation that I've never even like thought about touching my feet into. And like streaming was so fun when I was doing it. And like, I would just wake up and be like, what am I going to stream today? And I just stream. I loved it. It was super fun. But over time, I got really tired of it because I felt like I had to do something exciting every stream for it to be uh, like a good stream. And like, if I had a bad stream day, like I'd be like, I'll be all down to the dumps, you know? So I kind of stopped doing streaming because it, I still think streaming is really fun, but I kind of stopped and I kind of leaned more towards the video side, especially because I enjoy editing and like, Cutting down stream content into YouTube content is not fun. And I and I really wanted to make videos, but I wanted to keep streaming. And it was a, kind of a little bit dilemma. So I just ended up making the choice of being like, I'm going to do videos and I'll stream occasionally. But the streams are essentially just going to be streams. Like, I don't care about it being converted into a video. I'll upload it as a VOD and that'll be it. Like, I'll just want to leave it and be done. So videos are... It, so making videos is my answer to that question. Thank you for the question, Pizza. And finally, the last question and the most OG question. Why did you change your handle from Vexio to Bars? Also, is the name Bars a twist on your actual name? So my real name is Bryce. So I hope you guys, you guys can kind of see the, the similarities there. But the, the term or the name Bars is a twist on my name. And one of my good friends I met during COVID, his name is Sam. He actually, I met him and I introduced myself. My name is Bryce. And instantly, Sam just says bars just starts calling me bars and i would sit in the call with this man and i rush the world if you're familiar with i rush the world us three would sit in the call till like 4 a.m during covid and the whole, and for three hours of it me and i rush would be dead silent and sam would be in the background just going bars 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 i wish i wish i wish just like <laughs> insane psycho behavior just like background noise uh it, w it was actually it it was unhinged, but <laughs> that is that name become really like solidified in that friend group. You know, it came to a point where I was like, I feel like I relate way more to bars because it's like similar to my name too. And it's like a twist on my name that I do to Vexio. And I had Vexio for probably eight years prior. Like that was my username. And I was like, I'm happy with it. It looks cool. People know me by it. I'm, I'm chill with it. But then bars came along and I was like, honestly, bars is pretty good. It's a little bit more similar to like my name. It feels a bit more personal. So I ended up changing my name and doing the rebrand to Bars, and I have no regrets with it because I think it relates way more to who I am as a person than, than Vexio. That's like a bit more of a front and Bars feels a bit more like a medium 
front, you know, it's like, a, it's really similar to my actual name. And that's all the questions for the Q&A. But anyways, thank y'all so much for asking questions. I really do appreciate it. I'm all settled in now in my new move. You know, I just moved into a new state. I'm all settled in my new room. It's pretty freaking sweet. So I'm ready to start grinding and making some more videos. And I got a cool build for this next episode of Hardcore. So make sure to stay tuned. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you're new, uh, make sure to get subscribed or become a channel member if you want to meet, if you want to get those cool freaking perks of the, of the fancy member only videos and live streams. I also don't forget to join the discord. You know, I think the discord's cool. We've got a nice little community over there. A lot of people post their bills and ask for feedback. So you can do the same if you want. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.